So just a quick one this week. Um, I noticed uh, online there isn't that many uh, good guides to disassembling the uh, TM417 recoil. So luckily enough, I actually filmed all of the uh, tear down and uh, fix on uh, my mate 417 that I reviewed recently. So I've compiled my my takedown into a 15 minute video which kind of shows you what I did and uh, well it's one way to get the gun apart whether or not it's the intended way who knows but I managed to get it apart and get it back together without breaking anything and it all works so uh, yeah check it out if you're looking to disassemble a 417 or you just want to see what the inside of one looks like right let's crack this open then so first things first let's uh, take out the body pin we use the uh, back of the screwdriver just to Give it a push. There we go. I've got a rounded head Allen key here, so we'll just try and push it out a bit further with that. There we go. Ah, that lovely little retaining clip on that. But the bolt itself is non retained, so I'll just set that to one side. Uh, over. So, okay, I'm just going to pull the charging handle back a bit and then slide the upper receiver forwards. And there is the upper receiver. Now, we haven't got anything to do in there um, because the hop and the barrel is Tokimori magic, so we'll leave that be. But I'm going to need to take this off because I'm stripping this rifle or at least getting the gearbox out of it. So again, I'll set this to one side, put the spring in with it, and I'm actually going to grab some lecky tape and just tape that to it so I don't lose them. When they say don't run a TM recoil stock on 11 ones, they mean don't run a TM recoil stock on 11 ones. So we've learned that lesson now. <clears throat> now, 417s don't use standard M4 cast nuts, so you need a uh, 417 tool for it which is fair enough, big buffer tube. Um, but it, though people were looking for 25 quid plus for a tool and I didn't like that, so I uh, 3D printed one. Um, it looks pretty short, but I actually put a M6 thread on it, so if I need to, I can put an M6 bolt or some studding in there to give me a bit more torque. And this is printed in PETG, 60% infill, this is pretty strong. Also, layers are printed vertically, so I printed it in that orientation. So the weak point is, if I try and do get a twisting load on it, which is not going to happen. So anyway, let's get that on there. And let's crack that off. Um, just trying to do this out. There we go. So not as now finger loose well. Actually before I take this off, let's get the uh, stock off it. So it's pull up on this handle all the way up and it should slide off. So the wires actually don't run in the buff tube, they run under the uh, stock extension plate here. So there are two screws holding that down. These are crossed screws. Hopefully, nope, they have not been heavily Loctited in, which is good. Um, so sometimes TMs can be quite heavily Loctited. So there's the wire run, all that is very nicely done. I'm assuming that is a wire retention cable. Um, our wire retention trap, let's get the castle not all the way off now. A few moments later. Okay, that's it off. That's it off. There's our uh, wire cover. That's very nice. I'm just going to put that out of the way in the charging handle. Okay, let's grab some snips and get this cover off and see what's under there. Yeah, that's just the solder joint. So I'm going to cut that there and I'm going to cut that. 
there. Let's crack on with assembling this. So, castle nut up and over. Stuck plate up and over. Let's try and find the windest point to pull these all through. They're gonna go. Man, recoils are annoying. Why does anyone use these? Oh, that's wire up. The heat shrink's still in there, that's fine. So I get there. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's the wires out. Heat shrink out of the way. We should now be able to take off the whole buffer tube. And there we go. So, oh wow. There is the spring guide and spring in there. And this is, I'm assuming, the recoil weight. Oh, that sounds pretty beefy actually. That's got a pretty hard kick to it. That's actually really cool. I've never, I've never actually seen a recoil apart, so I've never seen how they work. So yeah. 417 wrench worked and um, if you're interested I can put this on Thingiverse or on Shapeways if someone wants one of those for cheaper than 25 quid. Uh, right, what next? Ah, okay so that's how the electric playback works and I guess that's under enough. To... I wonder if it cycles fast enough to cause that to also cycle backwards. That's quite interesting. Anyway, I'm surprised the piston's going as freely as it is there, which probably means either the piston teeth have gone or one of the other gears teeth have gone, which is not good. So just taking the motor base plate off. Hopefully it's not going to be an expensive fix because I feel really bad. If it is. Um, up. That's a strong motor. Right, let's make a note. Um, both the wires come up the back. Oh, interesting. Not soldered on, screwed on. Oh, that's interesting. Not seen that before with the motor. Use that one. That's quite cool. That's one way of ensuring good contact throughout. Another game this here. And what one is this? This is the super high torque Samarium Cobalt motor. Let's see what kind of Oh! Oh that is that's nice. That's got good. That's a really oh that is very very good. Those are sharp bevel teeth. I might have to pick me up some of these motors if I can get hold of them. Nope. That might be better. Wow, I feel like I'm working in a tent. Okay, that one looks like it'll be the one. Right. Mag catch and mag spring. Let's just reassemble this. Just so I don't lose any of the parts. So, to one side. There must be an easy way to take all of this off. Oh, that makes sense. Right. Recoil assemblies come off. Oh, and several parts. Okay. Right. Again, all of these parts are going to go over here. Right, let's get the pistol grip off and see what happens. Pull it all the way out. Red goes through the front, 
cut through the back. So good. There we go. That's one that. And we got two screws, which again I'm just. does need to come out. I don't think it's probably going to be this way. There we go. Pin is out. Put that one side. Oh. Ah, okay, that's being held in by the wires. Oh. There goes the uh, bolt catch. There you go. And there it comes, one TM417 gearbox. Um, there is the lower receiver for it, so I shall put that to one side. Just going to take the take down lever and push that back in. And not take down lever, the bolt release. Don't really know what that is. Oh man, that is a lot of grease in there. Wow. You see all that grease? It's immense. Right, so we've got the gearbox here. Let's see if we can figure out what the issue is. Ah. Yeah, that would do it. There's why it's not in the way. That's been nicely smoothed out. Um, that's not pulling crap. <laughs> right, what do we need to take this down? Oh, do we have to take that off? Yes, we do, because there's a gear set under that. There's a nice little spring there. Detent that. And you see there's a little spring here. Got my tweezers for this. A little spring here. It does normally sit in that little slot there. That was semicircle. Not even semicircle, a little curve. Just pop it out, set it there for the time being, and then we can unscrew this. Oh, this by the way is the bolt cut off. So I think when you pull the trigger on the last mag, the mag forces this up and catches it open and sets it up in such a way that the trigger um, disconnects from the electrical contact. So you can pull the trigger, but obviously nothing will happen. Quite pretty cool design, actually. I kind of wish more guns had an empty mag detect. Um, just add another bit of realism to the guns. I mean, I don't see why it'd be a bad thing because if the mag's empty, you're not going to be able to fire anything anyway. So it'd be nice to know. Just pop that off. Those are those two parts. Nice. Okay, so as far as I can see, there is a Phillips there. Or is that uh, that's just a crosshead? Um, and then we've got one, two, three, four torque screws. Uh, let's get Phillips out first. Uh, that's probably actually the best drive. For it. Or is it technically? This might be a posi drive. But yeah. Oh, that's pretty stiff. Now, um, there's been a lot of questions going around recently on um, various different social groups asking about are TMs really worth the price tag? And everyone's like, oh yeah, they're great, they're amazing. And then you ask them for what the parts are and they've replaced everything inside them. I honestly don't think you need to because there's no need to run this on an 11.1. I mean, my mate only did it because his 7.4s were dead and he wanted to go play. Um, he liked the hard way. Why you shouldn't do that? Um, but it was still ranging amazingly. Okay, right, that's a part. And the good news is the gears look fairly intact. Um, oh, that's interesting. It uses a compression tappet plate spring as opposed to a um, stretch tappet spring, which 
There's only one other gun I've seen that does that, and that's the um, G and G L85, technically the Army Arm L85. Um, pretty cool. Let's put that in there. Oh wow, it's a non-ported piston head, but it was still giving me pretty good compression. I think that's got a pad in it. Yep, that cylinder head looked like it has a pad on it, which is nice. So the sector gears teeth are the same for both the spur pickup and the um, piston pickup. Hence why the piston only has half teeth, otherwise it'd be interacting with the spur gear the entire way around. Uh, with the se sector gear the entire way around, which you obviously don't want. That's quite cool. I guess that's given the torque they need to be able to bash it back and forth. So uh, if you're still watching, I hope you found that useful. Um, let's see if I can do end cards here. So uh, if you uh, if you want to check out more tech work, I have some tech videos up here. Check out the tech playlist that I've got. Um, I'm guessing the previous video that I've done might appear here. I don't know. Depends if uh, future me can figure out how to do it. So yeah. Um, oh, and if you haven't already and you like what you see here and you want to check out more, perhaps hitting that subscribe button, which is probably my logo here. Anyway, probably didn't work, did it? See you next week.